when I arrived here, I was surprised. I saw the town is different, the people are different. When a refugee came, he came with nothing. He need someone who is here, who has uh, some possibility to help him because he's starting on zero. The economy in Boise did not really start to falter until later than it had in other parts of the country. But when it did here, it was a fairly precipitous drop off. And at that time, there was actually a little bit of pushback. We were hearing more the questions of, I don't know who they are and I don't know why they're here. Most of the people, if you say refugee, they don't know the meaning even for that word. I think those were probably the biggest hurdles for refugees coming into our community. As we were having these meetings with different community partners, the plight of the refugees kept coming up. What we heard most often was not understanding what the resettlement process is. How much can we plan in preparation for refugees coming? We convened a round table and we determined we needed to come up with some kind of strategic direction for the community. Basically six different pillars would help ensure successful resettlement. Education, employment, health, housing, social integration, and transportation. There is an active effort to implement the plan. In order to make that happen, you have to really accomplish a lot of small steps and one of those is to create more opportunities for refugees to learn how to drive. My name is Doug Pottinger. I own All About Safe Driving. One day I get a call from Tara Wolfson and she wanted to know if we'd be interested in working with the refugees and told her we'd love to at least try it. But then I started hearing the stories and that's when things got a little more serious for me. That's when I found out what they've gone through to get here. First time I met Benjamin was the first time that I ever worked with the refugees. He would get up at four in the morning he would pedal his bike about 25 miles one way, go to work, and then ride his bike. And this was last winter. I realized that if I can't have a car, I will be safe. It's like, it was like a dream, because I, I never drove before. Benjamin's got one of these smiles that just doesn't quit. It's just happy and go lucky. And the more I got to know him, the more I liked him. And then when we started driving, we were just talking. And I said, you know, what would be really neat is if you could just teach him to drive. And you know how to drive, Benjamin. And he said, yeah. I said, you get up in the front seat. I'll sit in the back seat. I actually hired Benjamin to start working for me. He's taught him in all kinds of languages, and he just does a wonderful job. It's something which I love the most because it's helping people from step to step. It's one of the ways that you can see the impact of the plan and sort of taking it from the paper to this is how it is directly impacting refugees. The fabric of our community has always been the story of immigration. And so for us to continue learning how to integrate our newest arrivals and refugees is being very true to the spirit of Boise. We have achieved a level of community ownership of the plan that is really essential to its longevity. I mean, it's ultimately about having a community that is more capable of serving refugees. So by creating those partnerships, it really makes an entire community able to welcome them and to work with them. Benjamin's taught me a lot. What he's been through in his life and how he cares for the people he works with. And he's caught the vision of people driving. And that's the thing that's so exciting to him. He wants them to drive because he knows they need to do it. He's just taught me how to love and how to care and how to just be a good person. <laughs>